So the rapid return of the Taliban to power in Afghanistan was uh, generally reacted to with shock from around the world. But I understand that some sections, at least, of the Pakistani ruling elite welcome uh, the Taliban return to power. Is that true and why? Yes, uh, informally, yes. They all welcomed and glorified the victory of uh, Taliban. But formally, they said, we will wait until the situation is clear in Afghanistan. But yesterday, when uh, the foreign minister of uh, Britain was on a visit to Pakistan, the foreign minister of Pakistan said, Kabul is a reality. We have to deal with it. And that's what they have been saying in the past, that Taliban's are reality. They facilitated the Doha negotiation, and they somehow helped uh, the Taliban movement to come into power. Now, uh, your Prime Minister Imran Khan was uh, widely reported as uh, describing the Taliban's return as the breaking of the chains. Taliban has not broken the chains. They have put the chains around the people of Afghanistan and they have been stranglehold in the old uh, conservative traditions which they want to bring back what they did from 96 to 2001. Now, the Pakistani um, intelligence agency, I ISI, uh, has actually played a big role in the very formation of the Taliban. Now, in these last 20 years, during the so-called war on terror, has the ISI continued to maintain those links that, uh, with the Taliban? Uh, that, that derive from its uh, origins? Yes, uh, it was Pakistan People's Party who was in power from 94 to 96. And the interior minister at that time was a military general, Nasirullah Babur, who has claimed publicly that he has built Taliban to come into power. And they gave all sort of support. Uh, they trained them, gave them money, gave them the arms. And that's how the Taliban in the initial period came into power. But they were saying that we need a strong government in Afghanistan. As you would know, after the uh, murder of Najibullah, it was Mujahideen who was in power for three years. And it was like government changing all the time. And it was very unstable government. So Pakistani ruling class at that time, which was headed by Benazir Bhutto, uh, thought that if we could bring our own people to power in Afghanistan, actually Pakistani ruling class always treated Afghanistan as one of their colony. They never thought and uh, expressed Afghan as an independent nation, as a sovereign nation. So they helped the Taliban at the time. And then for the last 20 years, they looked at Afghanistan that it is going more close to India. And Indians are the one who are helping the uh, Afghan government supported by the Americans to stabilize, to consolidate their power. So Indians went out of the way to put a lot of investment in, in Afghanistan, including building of the parliament uh, in, in Kabul, which is now been taken over by the Taliban. So Pakistani ruling class, after taking over of, uh, of uh, Taliban, uh, uh, the whole of Afghanistan, they were very happy because they thought it's a setback to Indian establishment. And they have lost their billions of dollars, which they have invested in Afghanistan. So Pakistani only, they can't look beyond their nose. They just want to see what India does and how we can compete with them. And they should really have a normal relationship with India. They should have a friendly relationship with India because we have more in common with Indian Punjab and Indian uh, uh, culture than the Afghani culture, which is a different culture. But Pakistani always went to support Taliban just to defeat Indian. And that's what uh, their whole intention was. So India was um, going out of the way to say publicly that ISI has helped. Now, ISI has not helped directly, publicly, formally. It is all informal. And also the main, I think, allegation we can have, the main fact is 
that many Pakistani Taliban, Pakistani Taliban, went into Afghanistan without the knowledge of this state. They thought they are fighting jihad, so they must go to Afghanistan. So it's more of a logical association of Pakistani religious fundamentalists, which compelled and forced them to be part of the Afghan Taliban rather than uh, direct support by the ISI and military establishment. So an ideological relationship was established and Pakistani Taliban and Afghan Taliban always said, we are brothers and sisters. So that is the real base which unite them more in close rather than directly supported by the establishment. Now, I understand there were some voices in Pakistan that have hailed uh, the Taliban return to, to power as a step on the road to the liberation of Kashmir. Can you tell us anything about that? Now, there are Pakistani fundamentalists who are quite happy. And they said publicly, even ministers of uh, this Imran Khan government, Imran Khan and his uh, foreign minister was a bit careful. They were saying, we have to engage, we have to go along. But they never said we are going to uh, accept uh, Taliban as the uh, official uh, ruler of Afghanistan. But many in Pakistan are in the illusion that Taliban would liberate Kashmir as they have liberated Afghanistan. But they don't know Pakistan army. Pakistan army would never like Talibanization of Pakistan in the sense that they should take over Pakistan and then also go to Kashmir. It is very difficult option by the, for the Pakistani ruling class uh, to, that Taliban should be more strengthened because of Kashmir. They would give support in Kashmir to some of the locals, but not directly as has been the case for the last few months and so on. They have an agreement with India. You don't intervene here and we will not intervene there. And it's the fundamentalist groups themselves who will try their best that Taliban should be strengthened in the Indian occupied Kashmir. But on the other side, the Pakistani occupied Kashmir, there is also a national movement. So as you know, Kashmir is occupied by the two forces. It's not just India, it's also Pakistan. Yeah. So I don't think that Pakistani ruling class would accept Taliban government in Pakistan. And they have taken military action against Taliban in Pakistan because the Pakistani Taliban's main enemy is the Pakistan army. As they say, they are brought up by the imperialists. So they have been attacking Pakistan army. They have been suicidal bombs against uh, different uh, um, institutions of the Pakistani state. So I think, uh, and Pakistani army is not Afghan army. It is enriched with the British imperialist traditions. And it is uh, not a new army. It know how to how to how to take how to bloodshed uh, people and it has played a part in uh, Palestine on uh, behalf of uh, Israel at one time. It has played a part in Bangladesh and it will never hesitate to use maximum force if they ever thought that their own rule is in danger. So it's a different scenario in Pakistan than Afghanistan. So more generally, uh, can you explain what is the interest of the Pakistani ruling class in supporting religious extremism, fundamentalism, not just in the case of the Taliban or Taliban Afghanistan, but Taliban Pakistan perhaps, or other, you know, if not those organizations, other religious fundamentalist organizations in, in Pakistan. What is the interest of the ruling class in promoting this religious extremism? Well, there has been off and on support for fundamentalists by Pakistani state. They are quite confused ideologically what to do. Sometimes they give them support publicly. Sometimes they use military options against them and they liberate areas where Taliban had taken over. And it started during Ziaul Haq period in the 80s when he used Taliban uh, Mujahideen uh, to defeat uh, the Afghan revolution of uh, uh, Tarakai in 78 uh, and onwards American imperialism has all is now an open uh, fact that uh, the Americans gave all sort of support 
to these mujahideen to use them in afghanistan you use a barbarian force against the other they will come to your neck as well this is the lesson of the history you can't uh, bring up barbarians and expect you are safe uh, you can only use them uh, like taliban in afghanistan now they want an independent government uh, and they when someone asks them a pakistani journalist asks them would you support pakistani taliban to come over in pakistan or would you ask them to stop their military actions their uh, terrorist action in pakistan but the afghan taliban zabiullah mujahid said it is pakistan issue it's not our issue and we can't intervene over there so you see the support of the afghan taliban to pakistani taliban and they will they are lying that afghanistan would not be a base for international terrorism it will be a base and pakistani establishment is really confused now i have seen different uh, periods coming up but they always think like the american thing gun is the option so uh, they always use military means to eliminate religious fundamentalism on the other side this government present government has become much more conservative than the previous government also i think pakistani establishment want to use religious fundamentalism to divide the people on the religious lines not on the class lines now for instance nawaz sharif was very open opposition to the military rule in civilian affairs he was thrown out of power because he thought military journals are too much intervening now military journals on one side in 2018 general election prop up a new group of fundamentalists which got nearly 9% of vote this was to divide the vote of the right wing because muslim league nawaz is also a right wing right wing party so they used a fundamentalist group gave them all sort of support and then they got some votes and they got few mps as well and then after the elections when they went out of their control they called general strikes in whole pakistan because uh, pakistan was too lenient with the france uh, on the issue of uh, these uh, blasphemic uh, content and also this uh, denmark so they said you should kick out french ambassador from pakistan so the military the same military which prop up these fundamentalists went against them arrested all of them put them in jail and so on so they use all sort of dirty tactics and uh, so they are quite confused how to deal with the fundamental the issue is ideological pakistan establishment ideologically is conservative want to take up uh, religious uh, groups they want to support them that they should not intervene in their own power um, affairs but they should divide the people of pakistan into religious line so they always support one sect against the other so that's how i think the the interest of the pakistani establishment is not very clear is not very consistent and they are always using different tactics to deal with the fundamentalist now finally farooq i understand that the actual border line between pakistan and afghanistan was drawn up by the british imperialists taking over territory that was traditionally afghanistan to maintain a military advantage uh being able to more easily intervene from what's now pakistan into into afghanistan now does this create a political problem for the pakistani ruling class in those areas which were formerly part of afghanistan how did the local people feel about this yeah the yeah the divider line is never accepted by both neither from pakistan nor uh, the afghanistan and taliban never accepted it pakistan never accepted it but they never use any negotiation to deal with this uh, all the time pashtun basically are afghans and pashtuns are the majority of the khyber pakhtunkhwa province in pakistan as you know four provinces in pakistan khyber pakhtunkhwa is the province next to afghanistan and most of them pashtun and they say very clearly we are afghan but we are pakistanis so afghan is like their their tribe 
their nationality uh, and uh, they are quite uh, proud of that and that's why in the past awami national party which was the main party of the pakhtuns uh, they always uh, said that we should unite uh, um, the pashtun of afghanistan and pakistani afghanistan pakistani uh, of uh, pakhtuns so but they never like advocated a new country over there but they talk about more unity more relationship and they were always against this uh, line and so um, that was used by the british again to divide them and to rule them and uh, really they did that in punjab they did that in the other areas punjab is also very unnaturally divided and uh, there are some uh, villages which are divided into two parts and there are some cities which were to be divided but then later they changed that uh, in that aspect so british went in in hurry out of uh, indian subcontinent because it was a revolutionary period british were really defeated in the second world war and they wanted to leave in at any cost and that was uh, like the main um, uh, purpose of lord mount batten who was uh, the last uh, uh, general uh, uh, british general in in indian subcontinent and so the whole thing were left behind in a hurry not in a calculated manner and the leaders of pakistan and india nehru and jinnah both thought a peaceful sort of uh, delinking with each other and both were absolutely wrong that was the major bloodshed in the history of the world over a million were killed few millions migrated into each other so this these lines around pakistan pakistan is like a new country it's not like india which has a long tradition pakistan was created 47 so the new lines around pakistan are not natural it's not based on nationalities it's not based on culture it's based on the whim and wishes of the british imperialism that's why it is always an issue of the borders and like kashmir that is also another area where both are fighting with each other so we think british went in uh, in a hurry but they thought we can go like this let them fight with each other let them be divided all the time and they can still have their own economic interest for future in the whole indian subcontinent thank you farooq for this great insight into this question and um yep we'll speak to you again 